Hello everyone, Stanley here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you absolutely everything that you need to know about structure blocks in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. If you are a creative player that does literally anything in creative, you need to know how to use structure blocks. They are insanely helpful in so many different ways. And honestly, if you don't use these, you're just going to be wasting hours upon hours with your builds. So what is a structure block? This is basically a block that allows you to copy and paste, rotate and export different builds in your world. They can select just about anything and they honestly work super well. So for example, I can load in this chicken cooker and now I have a 100% functional chicken cooker in the world. I can also go ahead and copy this build and then paste it elsewhere. So if I want to, I can rotate it backwards. And now as you can see, it is indeed backwards backwards. This is incredibly helpful for literally anyone that does any form of building and creative. If you are a builder, you can make a copy of a house, change out certain blocks, and then you have a different variant of that house. Or you can copy a piece of redstone and paste it in another area, tweak some timings or whatever, and see how that affects the overall build. There is honestly an infinite amount of possibilities when it comes to using these things, and once you start using them, you will literally never go back. Trust me, they are super worth it. Structure blocks are also incredibly easy to use and they're very versatile as well. So of course you can use them for like just tiny builds or you can select huge areas. You can select a 64 by 64 area all the way from bedrock to build height and copy and paste this entire area. And you can also kind of use it as a little bit of an x-ray as well to see what is below ground. Today's tutorial is broken up into a couple of different parts. First of all, I'll be showing you how to save a build and all the options that go along with saving. And then I'll be showing you how to load a build or paste that into the world. And there's also a lot of different options for that, all of which are very useful and quite fun to play around with. So with that out of the way, let's hop into it. So first of all, you need to know how to obtain a structure block. And with that, you'll need to use the command slash give at s structure block and that will give you one of these things by default you can also use this similar command give at s structure void and this will give you the structure void block which i'll be showing you how to use later in the tutorial so now that we have a structure block we can place this down and you'll see these little cages around them these lines indicate what the selection zone of the structure block is so if we place a block inside of this area or several blocks and then right click on this thing you can see on the right side here that we can see those place blocks and this updates in real time as well so for example if another player was placing things in here or if a cow walked into here we would actually see that in this window which has some fun use cases so then all the information here on the left side can be a little bit daunting but i assure you it's all pretty straightforward so if you wanted to save this chicken cooker as a structure you would place down your structure block and then see where your wireframe is as you can see it's a default folded into that direction and just to make life a little bit easier on us we're going to place the structure block over on this side that way we don't need to inverse any of the values the wireframe is already in the correct orientation to copy our build so now if we right click on this thing we can drag around the window on the right and we can see if our entire build is included or not as you can see it's a little bit short so the cap for the chicken cooker is not included and it's a little bit short on the back side as well so not all the redstone is there now, as you can see, there is this red, blue, and green line for the different axes, and that will tell you what direction you need to increase or decrease to include your entire build. So we need to increase the blue Z by a couple, and that will include the back of the redstone. We also need to increase the green Y value by a block to include the top of the chicken cooker, and if we don't want to include the ground here, we can simply remove that offset of one and default that to zero. And now we have just the chicken cooker alone. Now, as you can see, the wireframe is actually including the structure block as well. So that is where the offset here on the right comes in. We can simply offset this by one. And now, as you can see, the structure block is not included in our actual structure. So if we loaded this, the structure block wouldn't like overwrite itself. 
So that is how you select builds that you want to copy or paste. And the other options here on the left side is the structure name. You can name this whatever you want. It's now going to be called test one. The detect button over here on the left side is only useful in corner mode. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. You can also select include entities or exclude them. So if you want to copy a build without any of the chickens or armor stands or item frames, etc., then you don't need to include them. And you can also remove all the blocks from the area as well if you want to just copy over the entities. This is actually very useful for copying villagers and getting ones with the exact professions and trades and making duplicates of them actually. Furthermore, there's also the save in memory and save in disk and I don't really know what these do. Save in memory is the default and I haven't seen any differences between the two. So just leave that as default. And the final option here on the left side is to show the bounding box and as you can see that just removes the wireframe. So now that we've given the system a name and selected all of the appropriate options here on the left side we can hit the big save button at the bottom and that will tell you that it has saved the structure and that is the basics of saving a build as you can tell it is really really easy. Now there's also this big export button down here at the bottom. If you click this on a PC that'll actually bring up your file explorer and it allow you to export a 3D structure of your build wherever you want onto your computer. This allows you to 3D model your builds and it's kind of a very very niche feature so I'm not really going to be delving into that but if you enjoy 3D modeling then I would suggest that you look into that a little bit more. Once you've saved a build you're also free to completely destroy this or change this or do whatever you want to it. You can also destroy the structure block as well. So as you can see we can completely destroy the build and then we can still load it back into place. What we can also do is change up this build a little bit so you can go ahead and change a couple blocks on it maybe remove some stuff or add some stuff change some timings do literally whatever you want to it and then you can overwrite your original save so if we put this back onto save mode we can save that again and then any future one that we load in will be the exact same so you can overwrite your saves so what if you want to select a very tall build or a very bulky one and you don't want to mess around with all of these precise numbers in here to try and get the exact proportions of your build because that can take a very long time and let's be honest it's a little bit tedious especially for the taller and bigger builds well what you can do is you can select the corner mode up here in the top left and then we're going to name this thing whatever we want for example tower one so now we have a corner down here at the very bottom left front corner we can now go ahead and place another structure block at the very top back right corner and that is going to essentially create create a cube going around the entirety of this build. So just imagine one of those little wireframes going around this entire build. You can now go ahead and place down a structure block just really wherever you want. Put in yourself a tower one and then hit the detect button and that should detect all of the corner blocks in the area. And you might have to hit it a couple times, but as you can see, that selects the entirety of the tower and you don't need to place it down anything. You don't need to fiddle with any numbers. If you're not satisfied with these proportions, then of course you can simply move around a couple of the corners or just fiddle with the offsets or the size or whatever to get it precise. But that is really all there is to it. You can now go ahead and save this build and then load it in at any other point in the world. And that's all there is to it when it comes to saving your your build so now we can go ahead and put down another structure block anywhere in the world at any time and any dimension so you simply select the tab at the top and then hit load and now you type in your structure name so it's going to be test one for us as you can see that is going to change the wireframe of the build but keep in mind the offset has not been adjusted so if we load this in right now as you can see it's kind of like in the ground which is not what you want so keep this in mind when you are copying and pasting your builds if you included the grass and the floor of your original structure then having it pasted downwards by a block is not going to be a big deal but if you did not include the ground then you'll need to bring up the ground by a one just by typing in a zero you can also adjust the offset by one in either direction and then your structure won't overwrite your structure block which is pretty convenient so now we simply hit the big load button at the bottom and bam our chicken cooker is here in all of its glory so of course there is quite a few options when it comes to loading in your build for example you can adjust your offset so if i set that to 10 then our structure 
structure is now 10 blocks over there. And this might be very useful for a variety of things like proximity traps when it comes to skulk sensors and the like. So that is the basics of the offset. And of course you can do this in all three directions. Now we can also hit the include entities button. So if we load this in without entities, as you can see, our chicken cooker is going to be entirely empty. Or we can do this in reverse. We can include our entities, but remove the blocks. And now it's just the chickens which is probably the best part of the chicken farm. Another pretty niche feature of the load option is the integrity option down here at the bottom. By default, this is 100, meaning that 100% of your build will be included. So basically, this is a percentage of how many blocks will be included when you load the structure. So if we just set this to 100 and load that, you'll see that I just have like a little cube of blocks here. But if we decrease this to 50, then we can see that 50% of our blocks will will be randomly removed. So we can load this in and as you can see, it's now halfway degraded. And of course, this also comes with a seed for the destruction as well. So if you wanna get this exact same blob of blocks again, you can just go ahead and copy paste that seed. And now if we load in a new structure with the 50% deterioration and the exact same seed, as you can see, it's the exact same blob structure. So the integrity option probably is not gonna be that useful to you all the time however we can also rotate and mirror these builds so if we look at this little arrow right here we can load this in in various different ways scrolling down the left side you can see mirroring on the x and the z axis so let's go ahead and take a look at what that does all you need to do is simply click that and then load it in and as you can see it has mirrored on the x axis so now it is in the opposite direction and we can also select the z axis so now it is in the opposite direction and flipped left to right right as well or you can simply select one of these at a time and you know flip it left to right or do whatever you want to this is so useful so many times like you're gonna love this option a lot now, of course, you can also change the rotation of the build as well. As you can see, it's currently a zero degree rotation. We can change this to 90 and now it's facing to the right. Or we can change this to be 180 degrees and it's facing backwards. Or you can change it to be 270 and now it's like facing to the left side. If you're into cinematics or just really cool things, then there's also an awesome animation thing down here at the bottom. So as you can see, you can do layer by by layer or block by block. Let's go ahead and choose layer by layer for a moment. And then you can also choose the animation time. For the purposes of this, I'm just gonna set that to 10 seconds. And now if we hit load on this build, it's going to go ahead and load in the chicken cooker layer by layer. And of course you can change the time of this. So that is basically all there is to it. You can do some really, really cool things like this, like time lapses and various cinematics. Overall, it's just like an aesthetic thing, but it's still super super duper cool. Now, of course, you can also do block by block as well. So let's change it over to that real quick. Block by block, animation time is still 10 seconds. And as you can see, this is a lot more satisfying to look at because it's a little bit faster and a little bit smoother too. So layer by layer can include entities as well. It just takes kind of a second for them to load in. As you can see, it kind of loads them in at the final section of it. So I think that's actually a really good idea because if it included them layer by layer, or block by block, then the chickens have a chance of like escaping or flying out everywhere, but it actually places them in last. So that's pretty clever, I like it. So what is the structure void? How does it play into things? And what is it useful for? Well, these things are kind of like an invisible barrier block. So they can hold back water and stuff like that, but you can also pass directly through them even in survival mode. So they're pretty useful in their own right. However, they're also very useful in structure blocks so for example if you have a structure like this with a whole bunch of air in it and you try to load it in underwater or underground all of that air would replace the surrounding blocks so if i hit load on that as you can see all of the water is going to come rushing in however if we fill in this entire area with the structure void blocks which you can do pretty easily with commands you simply look at the block hit fill hit tab three times that'll fill in those coordinates and then you go up to the opposite corner and then you hit tab three more times and then you simply type in your structure void 
and zero, replace air, that'll fill in all of those with your structure voids. So now we can go ahead and save this build. So now if we load in the structure underwater, as you can see, it's not going to fill in a bunch of air because the water is not gonna get replaced in the first place. And if we go ahead and we have like some terrain right here or another build, those blocks are not gonna get replaced either because they're in the same place as those structure voids. So as you can see, it's going to keep that terrain right there this is incredibly convenient for pasting things into areas where you have other builds or terrain that you want to keep intact so for example if you are moving around like an igloo and you wanted to paste it into a hillside you might not want to delete the entire hillside and using these structure voids that is how you can do that without any damage and of course because the entire idea of the structure void is to tell the structure block and not to paste a block there there is no way for the structure block to actually place in structure voids in your world so you'll never have to clean these up or anything like that so you might have noticed there are two different types of structure void there's structure void with a data value of zero and a data value of one and the blue one from what i can tell is just very bugged probably shouldn't exist and doesn't do anything a couple of last minute tips and tricks for you if you are on pc you can control pick block so hold down control and then press your pick block button and that will allow you to pick block your structure blocks with all the data in it so as you can see this one's already got the name in it it's already got the size and the offset and all of your exact settings and if you hover over this item it'll tell you that it's got plus data with it so you can use this to use your structure blocks and actually copy paste the structure block itself without any hassle at all. And it's just a super convenient thing that you're going to be using all the time. You can also use structure blocks to peer into redstone and see things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to visually access, like the exact workings of the redstone for anything so as you can see we can peer into this moss farm and see the layout and make sure that everything's working properly without having to break any blocks or get in there ourselves i hope that the power of structure blocks serves you well and saves you many a time in your minecraft world if you enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new then consider leaving a like or possibly subscribing those are the best ways to help out the channel and thank you so much for doing so and i'll see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one thanks again for watching and then there was silence.